Hello everyone, this is your tutor AB. Today we're going to be solving a problem from the IB Physics HL examinations. This is a paper 2 question from the November 2023 session. Let's get started. A space probe of mass 95 kilograms is designed to land on the surface of an asteroid. The gravitational field strength G of the asteroid at its surface is 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3 meter per second square. Part A. The radius r of the asteroid is 230 kilometers. Calculate the mass of the asteroid. So, in your formula booklets, there is an equation g is equal to gm over r square. Now, this is actually the equation for the gravitational field strength. Now, we can use this equation because we have everything necessary. This will help us solve for m. So we know g, the gravitational field strength, is 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3. We know the radius must be converted into meters, so 230 into 10 to the power of 3 whole square, right? I'm converting it to meters, divided by the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 into 10 to the power of negative 11. This value is given in your data booklet. This is equal to mass. So if I put this in my calculator, what do I get? I get 2.14 into 10 to the power of 18 kilograms. And that's part A done. B, the space probe is carried to the asteroid on board a spacecraft. And that's a diagram right here. Calculate the weight of the probe when close to the surface of the asteroid. Now, we know the formula for weight is equal to weight is equal to mg. And now we've used this formula many times. It's the same here as well. We know the mass of the probe, so weight is equal to 95 times by g, right? What is g in this case? On Earth, we use 9.81 meter per second square, right? But in this case, we're using the gravitational field strength of this planet, of this asteroid, sorry which is 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3. And so, if I put this on my calculator, what do I get? I get 0.26 newtons. Okay, part C, C1. As the space probe approaches the surface of the asteroid, a rocket engine is fired to slow its descent. Explain how the engine changes the speed of the probe. Okay, what do we do here? Well, we need to understand the function of this rocket engine. Look, so how does a rocket engine work? Your, your rocket is going to be moving, and the probe is going to be moving in a certain direction, going towards the planet. This engine is going to fire a force in the opposite direction of the motion, hence, a net force is being created, right? And the reason a net force is being created is because the force of the rocket engine is greater than the weight of the probe. And hence, this causes a deceleration leading to a uh, decrease in the speed of the probe. So let me just give it in points because it's a three marker. You need three major points. First, we need to understand that engine fires a force greater than the weight in the opposite direction. That's your first point. So what does this mean? According to F is equal to MA, so I'll just put this in brackets. A net force is created right a net force is being created and because there's a net force there is a deceleration and hence the rocket I mean the probe and hence the probe slows down that's it these are your three major points. You can expand on it, but I've given you the basic idea. The engine 
is firing and there's a force being created in the opposite direction of the motion which is greater than the weight hence because there's a net force there is also a deceleration on the probe this deceleration is causing the probe to slow down on its descent okay c2 a constant force of 12 newtons is exerted by the rocket engine Determine the time for which the rocket must fire to reduce the speed of the probe from 0.64 meter per second to zero. State your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. We can solve this question using the impulse formula. J is equal to F delta T. This is given in the data booklet. Now, we know that impulse is nothing but the change in momentum given by delta P is equal to F delta T. Now, let's substitute all the values we know. What is the change in momentum? We know the change in momentum is mass into final velocity minus mass into initial velocity over the net force acting on the rocket. That will give me time. OK, now let's calculate this. We can take mass outside. What's the change in speed? we know it's going from 0.64 to 0. So essentially, it's just going to be 0.64, uh, sorry, negative 0.64 into 10 to the power of negative. No, 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 negative, sorry, it's just 0.64 over the net force which would basically be actually we can take the magnitude we don't even need to use signs in this case this four over the net force which is in this case we know 12 newtons minus don't forget the rocket has a weight right the rocket has a weight which we calculated earlier 0.26 and that gives me time now we know the mass of the probe is 95 kilograms times 0.64 meter per second over what does this give me 12 minus 0 0.26 11.74 newtons that gives me time and now if I put this all on my calculator what do I get you get 5.18 seconds or they're asking for the significant figure so that you can say 5.2 seconds and that'll be your answer don't forget the net force you must use net force if you just use 12 newtons you get this question wrong and you lose a good amount of marks maybe two marks out of four so make sure you remember that it says net force 12 minus 0 0.26 in this case okay show that the escape speed v escape of the asteroid is given by this this uh, this equation right there okay so what is escape speed it's in our data booklet escape speed is nothing but root of 2 gm over r now think about it gm over r does something look similar because we know of course the middle term has to be g can i some way write g in terms of this well what is g we know that g is equal to gm over r square huh can i convert gm over r square into gm over r well yes i can if i times gm over r square times r the denominator and the numerator will cancel and I'll get GM over R as the final uh, s statement. So what I can do is say G into R is equal to GM R square times R. This and this will cancel. This is not equal the same thing. So putting this into this equation, I can say V escape is equal to the root of 2GR. That's it. Instead of GM over R, I'm writing in terms of G. And because there's an extra radius that I need to cancel out, if I times G by radius, 
I will cancel out the r square and I'll be left with the root of 2gr. So calculate the escape speed of the asteroid. Well, we found the um, equation before and let's just use this to find the solution for this uh, question right here. Okay, so we know that v escape is going to be equal to using what we found in the previous question, 2 times g, which in the case of this planet is equal to 2.7 and 10 to the power of negative 3 times the radius of this asteroid, which is given by 230 kilometers. So make that into meters. So 230 into 10 to the power of 3. Now, if I put this on my calculator what do I get let's see 2 times 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3 times by 230 into 10 to the power of 3 okay let's write it now 2 into 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3 times 230 into 10 to the power of 3 okay so that gives me 35.24 meter per second. And that's the escape speed from this asteroid. Escape speed of the asteroid, sorry. And final part E. As the probe lands, a small stone resting on a rock on the asteroid surface is projected horizontally from the top of the rock. The horizontal speed of the stone is 34 meter per second from a height of 1.9 meters above the surface of the asteroid. So here's just a diagram to visualize the scenario. They're asking us to estimate the horizontal distance from the stone's point of projection along the line AB at which the stone lands. Ignore the curvature of the asteroid. Okay, how shall we do this question? This is a classic projectile motion question. So first we need to find the time it takes for the stone to fall down because we know the basic concept of projectile motion is whether I drop something vertically like this or I throw something like that the time t1 time it takes for the something to drop straight and something between thrown is going to always be equal and this is your this is a standard, okay? This is a standard. It always works like this. This is the concept of projectile motion. So if I can find the time it would take the stone to fall down vertically from its point, I'll be able to equate it and find out the total distance of the stone's projection. So you'll see what I mean now. How do I find the time for the stone to touch the ground? I can use the equation S is equal to UT plus half AT square. This is your kinematics equations. S is the displacement, which I know is 1.9 meters. I know, of course, it's at rest, right? It's resting, meaning its initial velocity is zero. So UT term just gets canceled out. You're left with half into GT square. So G, in this case, is the gravitational field strength of this, plant, of this asteroid, which is 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative three. That's times by some value for time so let's rearrange this i get inside a root 2 into 1.9 over 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3 and that gives me the time so what is time exactly equal to let's find out let's put this on our calculators 2 into 1.9 over 2.7 into 10 to the power of negative 3 Okay, so I get the time for the rock to fall down is 37 into 37.52 seconds, right? That's the time it takes for the rock to fall from the stone to fall from the top of the rock to the bottom. Okay, now we know that the horizontal velocity is always going to be constant. This is also a standard of projectile motion. This is the main concept. So because it's constant, I can use this formula, d is equal to velocity into time, where I know the velocity of this stone is equal to 34 meter per second, because that's the horizontal speed, it says right here. So I can say distance is equal to 34 times by 
the time 37.52 and if I put this on my calculator I get 1275.68 and then giving it to the appropriate amount of significant figures I can say that the answer for the distance that this uh, the distance of projection is actually equal to 1300 meters right and that's just due to a bit of rounding but 1300 meters because I need to convert it into the correct amount of significant figures okay thanks for watching please like and subscribe if you have any questions leave it down below and I'll answer it as soon as possible sorry for uploading uh, having an, incons an inconsistent upload schedule I was having my exams but uh, it's done now and I'll be uploading very regularly over the next few weeks, the next few months. Thank you for watching.